Another question that can be raised at this fourth step here is, uh, I've put this vague adjective qualifier here initially. It must be very intelligent and, and powerful. Uh, the idea being is if we're ordering a universe, then we have to be more intelligent and more powerful than, say, a, a watchmaker. And we know that watchmakers are fairly intelligent and powerful. Uh, but how very intelligent and how very powerful uh, must this god be? And we certainly know that on some versions of the argument from design, uh, 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 some people want to reach the conclusion that the, the intelligent and powerful designer must be omnipotent or, or, or omniscient. That is to say, omniscient and omnipotent, uh, uh, infinitely uh, so. Uh, is that necessarily the case, given the, uh, the 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 phenomenon that we're trying to explain here? Is it such that the only an infinitely powerful god could have created the universe? That would, I think, in part depend on whether the universe is uh, infinite in extension. Uh, uh, again, that uh, raises issues that uh, take us a bit further afield than we want to go here. But if we, for example, suppose that the universe is finite, uh, would we necessarily have to have an infinitely powerful god to explain the order in the universe? Certainly, we would have to have a god that has more power than the universe's finite power uh, if it's going to keep the universe uh, going the way that it wants to. But it wouldn't necessarily have to be an infinitely powerful. So there would be questions here about exactly how much power uh, is necessary, how intelligent and powerful. And there's a cut across issue here uh, when we think about polytheism. If we adopt a more polytheistic model and we say that there are several gods and or goddesses that are involved in the design and ordering of the universe, uh, then clearly they can't all be infinitely powerful. The more reasonable hypothesis in that case would be to say that this god has a certain amount of power, that god has a certain amount of power, these goddesses have their own uh, amounts of power, uh, and while they may be very powerful, uh, none of them is uh, infinitely powerful. And so it might be then a matter of having a, a, a gods with differing degrees of power, uh, uh, and that's the right kind of explanation. The point just is that there are many interesting sub-issues that uh, step number four would raise, and so we would again have, I think, some questions to think about uh, when we're, we're assessing this, this argument here. The uh, step five, let's move on to that one regarding step five. The uh, universe, therefore, had an intelligent, powerful order. A uh, controversial issue has to do with this one here in various renditions of the argument. Sometimes uh, this is put in the present tense. Sometimes, as I've put it here, this is in the past tense. Uh, do we say that the universe has an intelligent and powerful orderer? If we say that, then we're assuming that the intelligent and powerful orderer still exists uh, and is, is performing a function here. Or do we say, as I've put here, that the universe had an intelligent and powerful orderer, which leaves open the question whether the intelligent and powerful orderer still exists or is still operative and, and on the scene here. So uh, I'll just put that down here as, uh, as a question to raise here. The uh, question of tense. Should it be the present tense or the past tense? At the, if we jump ahead just a little bit to number seven, I've switched back to the present tense here, and this is the conclusion that most people who believe in the existence of God want to get to, not just that there was a God who brought the universe into existence and ordered it, but that there is a God to whom one can perhaps still pray or who, to, who, uh, to whom one still has uh, various sorts of moral obligations and, and so forth. And that depends on uh, the tense decision that we make here. So, if we agree with the argument entirely up to this point here that the complex order of the universe does require uh, an orderer, does it require that that orderer still exist, or is it a possibility that that orderer existed, simply say for the purpose of bringing order into the universe, but having done so, went out of existence, uh, his or her or its metaphysical function performed, or has retired uh, or gone on to, uh, to do various sorts of other things. Now this is, uh, in, in, the, in the modern world, often couched uh, in terms of a debate, or at least in terms of one aspect of a debate between people whom we call deists, 
uh, and those whom we call theists. In many cases, people who are called theists, part of their theological package is the idea that there is a God uh, who existed. And of course, God was a creator and God is a designer of the ultimate structure of the universe. But God still is actively managing the direction of, of the universe, still taking an active interest in uh, our human uh, endeavors. And so he is properly someone to whom we can have moral relationships and uh, someone to whom we can pray, right, and, and so forth. And that's a particularly, uh, a particular rather kind of conception of God. But another variation uh, of, of, of uh, modern uh, religious thinking has a more distant, uh, 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 science-friendly, right, approach to God. And it will take the, or it will rather make the lesser claim. It'll say, yes, we think given the nature of the universe's complex order that the best explanation is some sort of a godlike being. But we don't think that that godlike being necessarily uh, having designed the universe, uh, brought it into existence, uh, and set it on its course uh, is still actively hands-on managing. Instead, his having done so uh, uh, meant that his work was done, that the laws of nature that he created and imposed upon the universe are sufficient, and that the, uh, that the universe as it is is going of itself, perhaps uh, uh, along the lines that the evolutionary model uh, explains. So God then is uh, not someone to whom we are praying. Uh, God may not even be aware of our existence. Uh, it's a more distant mathematics and architecture kind of God uh, at the beginning of the universe, perhaps behind the Big Bang, but no longer someone who is uh, an operative presence in, in the universe here. And so that's one element of the debate between the people I'm calling the theists and the, uh, the deists in this particular case. So does this prove an existing God or a God that existed uh, at one point in, uh, in the past here? All right, moving on then to number seven, or sorry, number six, getting ahead of myself. Let's call the intelligent and powerful uh, orderer, to correct my spelling here, God. Uh, standard view and set of issues here is to say, that's fine, right? We can call beings whatever we want. But uh, we do have to be careful uh, that we're not adding too much baggage or smuggling too much stuff in at, at, at any point here. So, uh, for example, most standard conceptions of God will also include within them some notions of God's goodness or some uh, notion of God's perfection or some uh, notion of God's personal relationship or potential personal relationship to us as individuals. And people who are critical of the argument will make, uh, make the point that nothing in the argument that we have so far necessarily implies that this is a moral God or a personalized God uh, and so forth. So what we have really is a God that is intelligent and powerful and that's it. So the point would be fine, but right, beware of any sort of smuggling of theological content into right, the notion of God here. 